Hello. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. This is Pat. And this is uh, Garrett. We are two-fifths of a band called The Main from Phoenix, Arizona. That we are. And we are we are currently podcasting. This um, is a podcast. Yes. We, uh, we're hanging at home, recording some acoustic music at the moment. Um, we're, we kind of are done with the instrumentation. Yeah, we, we just finished. Like, so, like just now. I need food because my brain feels like a yeah. crazy person. <laughs> um, so this, this week on the podcast is Johnny Minardi, who is a good friend of ours and has been for quite a, a long time. A decade. A, a decade, yes. Um, if, if you do not know anything about him, um, he has probably been involved with one of your favorite bands. Um, he worked for Field by Ramen for a long time and then Equal Vision and now he's back to Field by, Field by Ramen. But, um, he, uh, yeah, signed tons of, of great bands and we, we, we talk about stories about... The Academy uh, is... When, uh, the, when the Panic of the Disco album was like exploding and he, he had to make very important decisions for it while the, while the uh, owner of the record label was out of town. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun uh, convo on the insides of the record label business. Yeah, and then... And we talk about uh, uh, him, him trying to get our band on Field of Ramen and us not doing it. Yep. Um, so there's some, there's some good talk about, about that and kind of what our headspace was at the time time with all, with all that so yeah it was, um, it was good good times yeah he uh he also he owns a clothing line um called good future club um and if you go to goodfutureclub.com and use the code 8123 like the uh numbers um you can get 20 percent off everything and anything um beanies hats shirts yes. um, hoodies yeah they have uh very uh positive messages and um you know just on, on the uh blog in, in in general i think um He's a he's a very inspirational dude and really cares and wants people to do good in the world. So, um go support him. Johnny baby. Yeah. So, um we will get into the to the chat here and we we hope you enjoy it. Have fun. Ready. How are, how are things going? You, you, you just getting getting back in town this weekend, or? Yeah, I was in New York for a couple of days last week, so now I'm just kind of digging back in. Is it freezing? It was super uh, cold, right? Yeah, New York was cold, cold and snowing, um, which I haven't seen in a while. Uh, so it was a little strange. I had to dig out a winter coat to head over there, but <laughs> <laughs> but I still had one, so I found it, and now I'm back in California, and it's 60s and 70s every day, so it's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> nice, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, I yeah. was um. Me and Ge- me, 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 me and Garrett were just talking about um, l- like looking back. Um, I, I, I was I was looking through your, your Wiki- Wikipedia earlier, and I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't I realize. didn't even know I had a Wikipedia. Oh That's yeah, cool. I, right. I, I, sure. I, I I didn't. It's I didn't. probably all lies, but yeah. <laughs> you guys I just started it for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. I um I didn't I just didn't realize how you know how many bands you would you had signed before. Like on your first, uh, your your first uh, record label, you know, like the 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 Academy is and and uh, and and uh, Gatsby's and just like, and that was all out of out of high school. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was nineteen, so it was like a year Holy removed shit. or so. Um, I mean, those bands I've probably signed when I was like nineteen or twenty. Uh, probably 20 for those. Cause that was the latter year and a half of the label. But, um, yeah, that was awesome. I also worked with hidden in plain view who went on to drive through, um, yeah. which oh, wow. was awesome as well. Great band. Good guys. Oh yeah. So what year was, what, around what year was that? <clears throat> um, so what did I do? LLR was 2001 to 2004. So I was 18 when I started and then 21 when I didn't ended. Oh wow. Um, so did you did you ever were were, were 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 you in a in a band ever or were you just always <laughs> in, into like the, uh, the, the 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 business side? Um, I was in a band and it oh, was yes. awful and amazing <laughs> as most one and done band members are. Um, <laughs> the, the band name might be in the Hall of Fame of worst band names ever. So um, it was White Suburban Trash and the Big Poos. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> Whoa! So yeah. it kept going. It just yes. I thought, oh, oh wow. No. Yeah, yeah. There's. I think sometimes we put that in parentheses, but I think sometimes it was just there. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> strong moves. Was it ska? It kind of sounds ska. No, it, dude. I played a seven string Ibanez. Like, it was, oh yeah, shit, it was good. I, I got some photos. I'll send you some photos. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. like I played two or three. Sh- I think two shows really is what you can count it as. But awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, getting... uh, we we recorded our first practice and released it on cassette to kids at school. So if it tells dude. you how smart we were. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like your like first uh, like band name in any any bands are always so bad. Oh yeah, <laughs> what, what were your guys though? Um, we are called the Kerosene Kids. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that, that would still work today. What do you mean? <laughs> But we weren't pyro, so we were lying. <laughs> yeah, true. You were looking cool. Yeah. <laughs> we're into fire. No, I don't know. I don't really like fire. That's <laughs> great. We'll have to send you that. We have we have a uh, a guy who actually did our our the mains first EP actually recorded that too. So that's yeah. great. We'll yeah. have to send it your way, and you yeah. can hear hear that. Yeah, we'll trade incredible music after yeah, yeah. this. <laughs> Um, so like what, what kind of then, uh, got you into the, the business end of, end of things and like, like wanting to do a, a, a record label? Cause um, I mean, cause d- during that, that time, you know, like, like now to start a, a record label is like pretty easy. You just have to have like a tune core account and you can right. just like, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah. upload, upload bands music and you can record them on your, on your laptop. But yeah. you know, back then I mean, like that was a reach for for you to like have a record label. I mean, like you had to figure out your like dis- d- distribution, and I mean it was just like such a different time. Yeah, I mean it was absolutely wild, but I think it worked for me at the time because I was very naive and didn't know anything, so it wasn't like this big daunting task because I didn't understand it. Um, so uh, basically, when I started, I I was like thirteen or fourteen, and I loved just like street teaming. Um, and I'd reach out to every label, just like whatever contact forms or email addresses, or there were street team sites and stuff too, to where you could just sign up and they'd put you on like five of them or something. So I was always kind of like spreading music throughout like my schools or friend groups. And, you know, we'd be skateboarding and I'd get a box of stickers or, you know, newfound glory samplers or whatever it was at the time. And just kind of always was doing that and just telling, I was always kind of just like, I like this music a lot. I bet other people would too. You know, it was a very simple mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, so when when it came to the local scene, when I actually got introduced to like going to to shows where there was only like 15, 20 people and like, oh, weird, like kids that go to high school with play shows because, you know, it's a weird understanding going to see like Smashing Pumpkins play to 5000 people. And then like your friend is in a band and you're like, what do you mean? Oh, wh- where are you playing? And they're like at this bowling alley. And you're like, oh, yeah, cool. So you're like it's a really interesting mind switch. And then I was doing that. But I really liked the bands that were playing in those little shitty shows and no one was going to them. But I was like, I bet other people would like this a lot. Just no one's heard of it. So I kind of approached a couple of the bands that I was not even that close with yet. And I just said like, how, why aren't your CDs in stores? Or like, I didn't understand, you know what I mean? Like the whole, the whole business side. So I just, I asked and they're like, they kind of would all laugh and be like, Oh, that's hilarious kid. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, like I'll put it out, I'll get it in stores. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that, that's what's so crazy. I mean, because when when we were like like first starting out in bands, it was like anybody that came to you, like yeah. like what we had multiple like people that was like the like guy that was like an intern at like the radios like like station in town was like I have a, I have a record label like I can I I can sign you and right. you're just like you have no options at that time right so like. You just well, and everything it, just, seems better than what you're doing. Like yeah, if right. someone's like, "I have a label," you're like, "Okay, cool, I'm Immediate. down." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. immediately stoked. Yeah, you're like, "Oh, yeah. you can help me in any way because I'm 17 or 16 and I don't know what's going on." <laughs> yeah, and it's you know sometimes it's easy to like now especially, but it's easy to kind of just ask around and be like, "Is this person reputable? Have they ever done this before?" Like whatever but that first signing it took me i got turned down by like, like a couple bands you know and and obviously rightfully so i mean i wasn't <laughs> really like throwing huge money around or i didn't have any proof of concept i was just like i love your band i'll make sure other people that i think will love it will hear it it's that that's my concept and you know luckily i i ponied up a couple bucks to get a couple bands and they started believing and it 
kind of started working and evolved into, you know, what we spoke about with Academy is and Gatsby's American dream and stuff. So it got very lucky, but at the same time, just like, was like, fuck it, I'll figure it out. And I kind of did and kind of didn't at the same time, but, <laughs> but learned a lot along the way. Yeah. So what was, was the, uh, Academy is kind of the first, first one to really get things going or, it's it's a weird um, it's a weird path because so the first record I ever put out was this band called August Premier who actually went on to sign to Feel by Ramen but no one even really knows that um, they're from Chicago and they're actually the ones that turned over uh, turned the owner of Feel by Ramen on to Fall Out Boy because they were oh, playing wow. so many shows um, oh, shit. so yeah it was kind of interesting um, I put out that record and they, I think they broke up like shortly after the Feel by record so it didn't really go anywhere fast. Um, but the first like record that I couldn't keep in stock, which at those times was, you know, really easy cause I was pressing a thousand or 2000 copies yeah. and people were ordering like one a week, you know what I mean? So you got yeah. supply forever. Um, but the first one ever was, uh, remember Maine, which was William Beckett's solo acoustic project before Academy is, um, and a friend of mine was just super close with him and like, Hey, you got to hear this kid. And you know, when people, it was like right when dashboard was really big and bright eyes and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And he was, he was just like this young high school kid. And I just was like, yeah, there's something really, really interesting happening. And kids are obviously reacting. So I became closer with him. And when I put that out, like I would like refresh the smart punk and inner punk charts like daily. And we would be like moving up, you know what I mean? And, and just I be remember like, those days. <laughs> yeah. And it was so fun. Cause people would literally discover music off those. Cause you would just, you would check it and be like, Oh, I've never heard of this band that's on the other side of the country. And mm -hmm. you would literally be able to pay three ninety nine and get their record, you know? Yeah. And it was a lot less noisy too. So it was like the, some of those charts you just sort of trusted. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean like, like for, for us, like, like the, uh, the, the unsigned charts, chart on on yeah. on, uh, on on myspace and um and on smart punk were you know some of the the biggest you know reasons that, that we started having like success really early absolutely um, and it was well because you, you would see it and you'd be like oh if this band's up near the top i have to at least check it out like right you know and like it, it's probably at least decent reason good. why it's like that's yeah. how i heard fall Out boy the first time they were on the uh they were like the first band on pure volume to hit like a million plays yeah, or something um, and crazy. i was like i was like what am i missing here like i gotta listen to this and that's when i heard it the first time right but back yeah. when charts mattered i guess <laughs> yeah when it, like i said i think there was just a lot less noise and there was a lot it was a lot harder to game that kind of system you know what i mean so you couldn't just like send a social media following towards something and vote on it or something. It was like actual purchases um, that people were just like, you'd watch and be like, there's so many Southern California bands that I've still never seen but live, but like they're in, they were in so many charts back then that I was like, they got to be the biggest band in the world. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah. and really legitimately never signed to a label, but probably sold a couple thousand copies of their record through that site. So... Yeah, so th that was kind of the first one. Remember Maine, um, and just had like great internet web store presence, and it, it was working. Um, and then yeah. right, right after that was Hidden in Plain View, then Gatsby's American Dream, and Academy is at the same time, basically. Holy um, shit! And yeah. those were those were our final two releases because from there, that's when I had left, uh, and we kind of ended the label. Yeah, I I I think the um, cool thing is like when when you were doing that 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 uh label you know i think like people might have this idea of like you know a, a guy that works at a, at a record label and it kind of being very different than the the lifestyle of someone in a band you know where right. where you're you know you're you're writing in a shitty van and you're 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 sleeping on floors and you're doing all this stuff but i you know kind of get get the idea that that's the approach that you had with the record label i mean and and even even as you got like like further along into your your career it's like you you were always the guy that was like you would go on tour with the bands you would you would you know it's like it's like sleep in the van and in crappy hotels and um was 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 that kind of did you feel like connected to the uh the the, the music scene at the time so you were yeah. just you were just doing like 
any anything you could to be a part of it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and before even the record label, like the transition from like street teaming and not understanding what a scene was into then seeing the same bands pal around and play together. Like I would go to those shows and start to be known as like the dude that would just be like, yo, do you need any help? I'll sell your merch. I'll help you load mm-hmm. in. Like the literally the most minute things without being annoying, like yeah. everything in that world. I was just that guy. And I mean, the first couple records I put out, like it was my life. Like I didn't, I worked at a record store, so I would just take like a month off and go on the road with the band and help. I would sell their merch and tour manage and just make sure that every dollar they had kept, stayed in their pockets, you know, or they lost less money, I should say yeah. on the first, <laughs> on the first runs. Cause dollars weren't in the pocket to begin with, but we, yeah, I mean, it, it really helped me understand that. And I think that that's one of the things that even now, which is crazy to say, it's almost 20 years later, it's like 18 years later. It's like, I understand that. And one of my first things when I speak to new bands is always like, look, I get it. Like you're the one sleeping on floors. I'm not like all this shit, but like, I do understand those moments. I can absolutely, you know, there's tornadoes in Oklahoma city on my first day of my first tour ever. That was like, holy shit, you guys have to go through this all the time. Like this is really (laughs) normal for you to have to figure out, you know, in a new place, how to duck and cover for a natural disaster, (laughs) like really extreme circumstances. But you know, that was a great eye opening experience when I'm bugging someone, like even making records today, it's like, I'm bugging someone to send me over their lyrics or an updated verse or whatever. And I'm like, sometimes it's like, you got to just understand the, the, you know, the, the two way street of like other stuff. But I absolutely, I loved those times. And I st- like you said, even when I was working with rocket or whatever, I would jump on the bus for a week at a time or the van for it a week at a time. If there was something important going on or like we were in the midst of like going through demos or songs or anything, like I just always find it more appealing to be the guy on their level to go in and really dig in rather than to just call them every morning, you know? Totally. Um, so when did when was like the moment you kind of felt it starting to I mean you you see the you said the William project right. started to pick up but was it uh once the academy started going when it was like oh shit stuff stuff starting to change or yeah, was the, yeah that was like the bigger turning point like <laughs> the 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 William part was really big because it went from me selling like tens of records to hundreds of records, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it was like, and so so that was like a change all in itself of like, whoa, I think I kind of, and that was my fifth release. So the, 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 that one, I immediately was like, whoa, okay. I could see how this would work on a larger scale if I had more of these types of sales numbers. Um, so it kind of kept me motivated. And then, you know, the, the Academy is stuff, man. And and it's funny because when, when William told me and my partner, Tony at the time, um, that he was starting a band and not doing Remember Maine anymore. We were like furious because it was our first like decent seller. Success, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, so then he's like, dude, but just come over, like listen to what we have two. we wrote two songs. I'm like, you're quitting for two songs. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then like we went over and they played them literally three times in a row over and over. And later that night, that was the Academy at the time. And later that night we're like, all right, we're in whatever you want. <laughs> let's just do it. Um, Literally went to my computer, printed out a new contract and had them all sign it. Um, So it was just like, you know, it was just this moment of like, oh, okay, you are looking at a bigger picture and and all that. So right at that time, they were working on their record. Um, I had signed Hidden in Plain View, which had a release out. I re-released it. Um, And then so that was happening and they signed a drive through immediately. So it was like oh shit, now my bands are like going to bigger places, um, which a lot of people would, I don't know if they recommend against it, but like, I always thought like, if you just do the right thing with good people, uh, a lot of more people are going to want you around. So I immediately wasn't trying to like lock bands down, uh, or anything wild like that. And then when I signed Academy is, and we put that out, we were selling a couple thousand, which again, jumping from a couple hundred to a couple thousand was immediately like, wow, we don't even have money to press another couple thousand because that's a lot <laughs> of money to press 4,000 records or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was them and Gatsby's at the same time was a really important lesson because I dumped so much money into both of those bands at the exact same time. And you know, when you would go through Smart Punk or Distribution or whatever, you wouldn't see that money even if it sold well for like a year. Yeah. So yeah. I was the guy with like $30,000 credit card debt just because <laughs> I believed in these bands. And then like, at the end, the last day of the label, 
I had $28,000 in LLR credit card debt. And everyone's like, dude, you killed it. That was the best. You probably made so much money. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, at all, I mean, but that's cool. <laughs> which is like, you know, such a, a common like thread in, in people that end up like making it and in, in doing this is just like willing to do anything. I mean, right. I, I, I remember Tim, our, 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 our manager, my brother, for people that don't know, but like would just like literally he was he would do anything. He was mm-hmm. printing shirts for bands and he was <laughs> like prom- promoting shows and had a clothing company and would paying for like, the record. And, and yeah, <laughs> he would just like, mm-hmm. like pay for, for bands albums that like, like he wasn't making any money on it. Yeah. Like he, he was just like doing whatever to like be a, be a part of it. And like, right. that's, it, it takes that level of dedication to like break through. I mean, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was a moment right after we signed Academy that Gats, we first of all, we reached out to Gatsby's American Dream on Instant Messenger just because we loved them. And we, <laughs> fo- we found Bobby from Gatsby's American Dreams, um, that, whatever, AIM handle, and we reached out, and he was responding. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I thought they were such a big, like, yeah. you know, huge band at the time just because we loved them, and they are on a national label. Um, and, like, we just got to be friends over a couple days, and he's like, yo, we're going to go record an EP we would love to do it with you. And I was like, yeah, what the fuck? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? It made no sense. And we had literally just maxed out every credit card on the Academy record. And I went to my partner and was like, hey, we got to do this. He's like, dude, he was more of the money guy, like the smarter guy. Uh, (laughs) And he he very much was like, dude, it's impossible. You have to say no. I was like, this is one of our favorite bands. They want to be on our label. You don't say no to stuff like that. Like, we'll figure it out. We'll just figure (laughs) it out. And we opened another credit card specifically to do it. And I'm telling you, this is like credit card five. It wasn't like third one. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it was like, I don't know how as 18 year olds, we were getting just like hand over fist credit cards, but you know, it worked out now. Now, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it just took every sort of like you're in your gut. You kind of, I was like, I'm signing this band, whether you want to or not. So f- let's figure out how we're paying for it. And it's going to change the course of what we want to do. So yeah. it actually did. I mean, those guys are still friends of mine and, and, and really important pieces to the puzzle of, you know, my career. So, and, and they've taught me a lot too, because they were the first band I ever worked with that wasn't the strict pop format. Like they were so against choruses when I met them and really odd. So it kind of taught me another side of the world and, you know, really interesting guys. Yeah. And then, so then, then you go to working at, 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 at field by, by Raman and you kind of go from being the guy that's in charge to, you know, to, to working for other people. Um, what, uh, what do you remember from like the early days? Cause I mean, I would imagine like, right, right, right. As you got there, I mean, all those bands were just blowing up. I mean, like, like panic, the disco was putting out records and, um, yeah, it was it was probably the best time to ever get hired at any label in the history, I would say, for yeah. for the sake of like, you know, not even just our scene, just like going from zero to 100 so fast and being there right at that moment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting entry point just because I had a good history with John, the owner, uh, because he signed two of my bands from LLR. So when he first signed August Premier, I didn't have a contract with them, so they went freely. Um, and then the Academy is, I had two more full length records in a contract with them. And I lived with the guys at the time and John came out and visited because him and I and the Fall Out Boy guys were all close. And he, Fall Out Boy, Pete was bringing them out and saying, Hey, you got to, this band's opening for us. Why don't you come out to the show? I think it'd be good to, to get them on the label. So John came out stayed with us at our apartment with the with Mike and William and then my partner Tony and we just got to know each other really well and he's like look I want to sign them he's like what's the deal and I said well we got two records left so like here I am thinking like I hit it rich I'm like oh man he's gonna give me like a million bucks this is gonna be sick <laughs> hey, I'm about to buy a house this is great it worked yeah. everything worked and then and then he's like yeah we don't we don't do that like we're not a big label like Fall Boy was just starting to break off of Take This to Your Grave and like I said you know all money in the music industry is like a good year delayed so he's like yeah. dude we don't have any money like we made that fall play record for like 15 grand like there's nothing we don't have like a bank account like that you know and i'm yeah. just like I, so then like i got the guys in the band you know days later looking at me like 
man, like we got to come up with some sort of deal. Like this is kind of the next step. And so yeah. I kind of like went through these crazy, like f- trying to find myself moments. And I was just like, man, these are my best friends. Like I would much rather than me get a weird payday that have them succeed. So I sat with Tony and I was just like, we got to just tear up the deal. Like it's the right thing to do. And he's just like, what do you mean? And I'm like, we just have to, that's the right thing. And we literally tore up the contract and we're like, you guys are free to go to FBR if you want. And wow. they went, they went obviously. And then, um, right at that time they were, ex- FBR was expanding very fast because the fall point thing was happening and Pete was starting to bring them other bands. Nothing. Gym class had just signed. Um, I think Paramore was happening right at that time, or or at least in the beginning stages of figuring out songs for the record. Mm-hmm. And then, so they were expanding, and it was very much just like it worked out because John kind of saw our true colors that he actually offered us both jobs uh, pretty immediately. And to which the stories gets weird, but we turned them down for a long time, like four months, just because we're like, we believed in our label so much, which is so funny looking back at the monster debt we had. And we're like, man, but like, we can go work with all our friends, like Academy's there, gym class is there, Fall Out Boy's there, like we got to just go. And then we, uh, I, you know, Tony wanted to be a tour manager and he still is to this day. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going. So then I went. And so, like I said, like John and I had a good relationship. It wasn't just like I applied, got hired blind. So he immediately just like threw me into my strengths and, um, you know, I, I learned so much from him. I wasn't even an A&R right away. I was just a retail and marketing guy. Um, so I just literally did what I kind of told you, like, I'll just tell people about great bands. Like that's immediately what I, what I flew into. Yeah. I mean, like you did something that like most people wouldn't do in, in any aspect of their life. It's like, you know, you, you just could have caused a, a huge problem and just said like no like I have this band that's that's having success and I have two two more records bunch right. of, of a bunch of like money to, to be made there you know and I, I think like too many too many people are caught up in like what what's happening r- right now as a, right. as opposed to you looking at the the big picture of what that meant for you I mean if if you, if you would have held the, ha, like held them back, I'm I'm sure the relationship with, oh, with the yeah. band would have <laughs> would have been pretty bad when 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 they're watching all their all their all their friends get big on on, on FBR and they're on their their buddies <laughs> record yeah, label. You know? Yeah, I can't even so, ima- imagine making that second record with them with that <laughs> tension. So like, and honestly, maybe that played a huge part in it. I can't fully revisit the memory of it, but it's like yeah. I, I'm sure I was like, dude, this is their opportunity, and we're the ones. We two people will be the people standing in the way. Do you think our working relationship will not suffer from that? Like it's impossible to ever get back to six months ago and the happiness and excitement. Like it's, it's over. Like that's just what it is, but let's do the right thing and everyone will eventually win from it. And Tony uh, tour manager's panic at the disco still to this day. So it's, it's not like he, it didn't work out for him either. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, so Okay, you you leave the, your own label, and then you go right into what is about to be the biggest label of the scene. Like, where's your head at? Like, what is what's it like? <laughs> it's uh, being it's at crazy. the top, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't immediately there, which was kind of awesome to like understand. Still, like the 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 label John described of like you know st- it was a small staff, and you know we weren't like it wasn't a glamorous thing whatsoever, and. You know, I just saw everything happening with all those bands and it was just exciting. Like I I was 21. Like I can't imagine many 21 year olds get to see that thing from the inside and learn from someone like John who, you know, obviously had crazy success and now runs Interscope, which is one of the biggest major labels ever. So it's like learning from that person at that time, like that's the best college anyone could ever have um, in the music industry by far. So it it was crazy because the amount of records that would come out and the partnership with Pete Wentz at the time and all that other stuff, like the timing of all of it couldn't have been done better. And with every record, we would like break the record we had just set with the previous release, you know? So it was one of those things where we were just trying to figure out the funnel of, you know, there's so much excitement. There's so many big different fan bases and we were just trying to funnel them all into an FBR brand. And I think, 
did it pretty delicately, but like obviously with the help of all of the bands and, you know, the mouthpieces of all those bands spoke so highly of the label and the family vibe and all of that stuff. So I think it was just like a whirlwind. And, you know, during I lived in Tampa for two and a half years and working side by side with all those people was just unbelievable because we were all kids except for John. I mean, John isn't, I don't even think he's 40 yet, which is crazy. So he wasn't even that like, he wasn't like a seasoned veteran. It was his first thing he ever did in music. So we were all learning as we went and, and it was just crazy. I mean, it was like numbers we had never seen. And like I said, we were just breaking records and nothing was normal. It was always just like the next step was like crazier than the last step that was crazy at that point, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like what a, I mean, just what a time period. I mean, going, I mean, the Academy starts getting big and then Panic the Disco just freaking explodes. Yeah. Like, were were you, were were you guys just like amazed by it? Like, like oh did yeah. It, I mean, I don't even know I mean, how you guys you, how took you, over MTV. Yeah, it's like yeah, there was a TRL day. That was amazing. It's like like how do you comprehend that? Like from like, did it feel like things were going insane? Or I mean, like like, like when that when that panic record like like started to explode, did it? Right. Was it hard to to keep up like, oh my god dude literally yes because that record we had no idea how many records to make because the band had never released a song before for sale you know and that was i think it was before itunes yeah it had to be because yeah we were doing so many physical units at the time and it was web store and distribution and tour or whatever but yeah that panic record dude like we didn't know what it was going to be because all you could judge is like myspace stats but we didn't know how that translated to sales because they hadn't released they didn't release an ep they came out of the gate with the full length so we had no idea what to do and that is the week the week of release john went to italy to get married and have his honeymoon for two weeks right at the beginning of it and this was my first (laughs) release there was like a gm right above us and then but he was a kid too he was just he wasn't like you know he'd never seen anything like it and i was the retail guy so that was the first record that came out and i don't know what we pressed we pressed twenty thousand units or something you know nothing crazy crazy by the standard of what you think that band is and we got a call from best buy i want to say at noon on the east coast and they said we're sold out of everything we need more and we and it was like three hours into the doors being open and that was on the east coast (laughs) and we were like oh shit and i was like and i'm the guy i have to be the guy that's that orders more but john's overseas the time difference he's not he's not awake right now so i have to <laughs> i have to that everyone at our distribution company is like you have to green light like 50,000 copies of this like today in order to get them in the stores by the end of this week and i'm like i can't that's so much money like i can't make i can't make that call I'm like dude this is literally in your hands you have to figure it out and i'm like there's no possible way I'm making this call. So I had to call. We had just started working with Atlantic Records on like a friend basis while they were figuring out whatever, you know, subsidiary thing would happen. So I made a weird cold phone call over to there and just said, hey, I'm in a really weird pickle. I need this to be figured out. I'm the guy. I feel like I'm going to get fired if I do this because if I do it and we don't sell any, I'm fucked. And management's like calling me and asking me when I'm green lighting it. Is everything cool? And then the guy's just like, you'd be insane not to. You have to do it. Trust me. It's fine. With the numbers they're reporting right now, like you're fine. And I ultimately did it. So it doesn't sound as scary knowing what the band <laughs> is now. But, yeah, but, like, no. but like what if their East Coast following was just crazy? Yeah. And then here I am like quadrupling the order with a button, you know, and it kind of, it worked out obviously, but it was, a, it was like a two hour period where I was like, I'm not ma- equipped for this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this, this is above my pay grade and my boss isn't here. I don't know what to do. And it was one of, that I was the moment. Adult. Dude, I was, yeah. And I literally did that and called Atlantic and they were like, done. You have to do it right now. Don't wait any longer. You'll screw it, <laughs> screw it up, you know? So, um, but yeah, that was the moment that I was like, this is insane. And like, we're literally learning new things every day because you just have to make these crazy as educated as possible, but you know, they're crazy decisions. So yeah. you'd see that. I mean, even when Keto's What We Aim For came out, like 
again, that was all my space. So we're like, we don't know what this is going to be. And it, at the time, I think it came out right before panic and it like broke the record for the biggest fuel by ramen first week ever at the time. And it was like 13,000 copies or something, but that was such an wow. absurd number for a yeah, band. Yeah. And they did, I feel like they played a couple shows or I don't even remember where they were in the, but like at my space and MTV just like picked up on them somehow and it worked. Yeah. That's, that's insane. Yeah. So then, as you know, as all this kind of happens and like, like that 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 momentum and, and success just continues, you know, for the the next couple of years, it just it just continues to go insane. Um, and then you transition into being an A and R guy. There, did it did it feel like? I mean, you had to have kind of had um, a little bit of an easier time, like convincing bands to come to the yeah. label, absolutely, than than, than other things because it's like who who wouldn't want to be a part of that because like people were thinking like i shine to feel the ramen i am automatically on on mtv i'm automatically huge which which obviously isn't necessarily the case sure sure but i mean was 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 that yeah i don't felt? like yeah absolutely it was very rare that you know it, it, the the pitch was a lot easier because you could point to a lot of you know case studies of like yeah. you know hey this is what you do on tour these are the bands we would try to get you with these are the things and like you could map out a road pretty quickly so it was ultimately like we you know i don't there's there's not a lot of cases where it was like oh man we didn't get that band or whatever. I mean, outside of your band, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I, remember, I remember you coming into the show in Chicago and I yeah. was like, on our, 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 our first, first tour, our first ever. ever tour. There was ever, like our yeah. last show and with, with the morning light and, yep. and Brighton, Brighton yeah. and you coming and I knew you were coming and I was fucking freaking. I was like, dude, the fuel buys coming. This is insane. Yeah. And maybe we had kind of talked about it. Just there. through Tim, maybe. Cause yeah. I think I, Tim and I were kind of, you know, just internet buddies at the time, but I don't think I had ever met Tim at that yeah. point. Yeah, like, but I remember after the show, like, you'd be like, oh, that was cool. And I was like, oh, shit, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. But because I remember going home and like on the way home calling John and being like, yeah, we got to we got to do this. It's it's great. <laughs> Everything's cool. And, and it, Which is like, you know, looking back now, like for us to have not done that, you know, to not sign to Feel by Ramen when we had... You know the opportunity was crazy at at the time. You know, I mean, like yeah. obviously it like worked out okay for us, but um, absolutely. I mean, I I remember. I mean, it was like 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 you were you were talking to Tim and working on it, and then uh, and then uh, Sean for, from Cute was. <laughs> I mean, he, he would he would call me. I mean, I remember, dude. The uh, night that I lost my virginity in a <laughs> drive-in m- m- movie theater, oh like God. right right before the movie, I'm getting a call from John Janik and and from Sean, yeah. and they're just like, because they had heard that we were like probably gonna go with 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 Bob Fre- and uh, yeah. signed to to to, to Fearless, yep. and they're just like trying to see like what <laughs> what they could do to like to change our minds, and I'm just like. Dude, I'm like freaking 17 <laughs> years old. Like what? I remember yeah. being, I'm like, I remember on a being so date great. right now. Like so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to have sex. Like, I remember <laughs> being in your room and it was like, it felt like Wait, we it had. Wait, was with you? What the? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, when we actually figured out, it was like, yeah, yeah. we were all at Pat's house and it was like, it felt like coming down to the minutes. Like, yeah, it was, it like, was. It was it like, was. Bob, Bob's like, I'm going to pull this in like five minutes if you don't say, yeah. <laughs> yeah then, I remember that, yeah. And then you guys were like, no, we're going to pull it in two minutes. And it was like, what the fuck, <laughs> man? I'm a little kid. Yeah. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> we uh, made a checklist. Uh, we, we, we made a checklist of like the, like, the pros and cons of like every every record label um and if you guys lost i'm sorry i know i was gonna say give me that checklist we could have known what we needed to improve on i know and like i don't i really don't know what it was i i, I do i th- i think it, it was because bob told us that um you guys are going to be the only band i'm gonna sign this entire year right and like you're gonna be my focus and like we That's were just what like it was. 
We were yeah, like, oh. and that's hard to de- that's hard to deny. Especially, yeah. the, I'm I'm friendly with Bob, and I I like him, and I I like the label, so I I very much can understand that that move. And and if that rang true, I mean, clearly they did a lot for your band at the time, so I can't even say that you made a wrong decision by any means, because clearly we're still here talking. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um. But, yeah, and, you know what? It was so, crazy. Yeah. What's so crazy about that that time period? Um, you know, so th- th- this is like 2007, I guess, you know, 2008. And so this is kind of like coming down a, a bit on, you know, Panic and Fall Out Boy and Paramore and Gym Class and all right. th- all this success. And all those bands kind of came out of like an underground scene, you know, right. where they're, you know, they're playing in, 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 in basements to, to know people. And then all of a sudden they're huge, you know. Um, and then... The bands that were coming out, which I guess now people call like the like the like uh, neon, the, yeah, like the neon era, <laughs> the MySpace yeah. era, right. whatever. Um, you know, a lot of you know kind of crappy bands came out of that time because <laughs> because um, I th- well, I mean, and like some 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 awesome ones as well. But um, you know what what the difference was is like bands were able to see that it was possible. To be on the radio, to yeah. be in arenas, to be on on MTV, and I think that totally changed the culture of bands, like in, yeah. in like in our in our in our scene, you know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and a lot of them, you know, you could see the scenes and the and the tides completely change. But yeah, I mean, even like Cobra Starship coming out at that time, like Gabe coming from Midtown, and you know, he just wanted to kind of do this like fun project that did the snakes on a plane song. And then next thing you know, that song's kind on the radio. So he's like, well, shit, (laughs) you know, now I got to make a record and, you know, and had a lot of radio success after that. And yeah, I think that they all came from a place of, you know, integrity and like trying to do something, you know, either fun or like very, you know, the, the artist in them, or they just wanted to grow the scene. I don't know. It was a very interesting time. Yeah. Where, yeah, I mean, a lot of those bands, shit, there was so many really bad ones, obviously, that, like, we had, were getting smashed by every lawyer and manager to sign every one of those. But you yeah. can kind of see the ones that were just like, oh, you're, like, in your late 20s trying to wear neon now, touring with <laughs> late teens. Like, this is getting strange here. You're just trying to cash in at the end of your your run. So, but there was there was a lot that I thought... You know, that stuff was interesting because, I mean, even you guys obviously kind of caught a tale of that, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, I guess your beginning era and like what, All Time Low and like Boys Like Girls and stuff like that was kind of touching in and out of that for the yeah. first couple records. I mean, the first record for you guys, but, you know, that whole era, most of them stayed and you guys did your own thing, which was, you know, more interesting for, than most of their careers. But yeah, I think that. Um, that there was actual scenes though, man. Like, I don't, I don't know. Does it, I, I feel like it does exist in a somewhat of a small pop punk way at this point, but yeah, kind of I a, mean, a cool club more than anything. Yeah. I mean, like to me, to me, what the biggest like difference is and what, what makes it hard, like what makes it harder now, I think for, for bands to have, have success than it, than it was for us, you know, is it was like, you know, we had, um, we had such a carved out path where it was like, all right. We play on the Warp Tour. We are in AP Magazine. Mm-hmm. We are sponsored by Snakes and Suits and Glamour Kills, and we're on Absolute Punk. And yeah, so so it it, it was like you like knew exactly where to go to, hit. Yeah. to mm-hmm. to reach the audience that you that you that that, they, that you wanted to reach, which is why like the the, the scene was so strong. Yeah, you're right. I guess there were better, like maybe stronger foundations in each facet of where you needed to go. Like if it was press, it was like alt press. It was absolute punk. Those were like the two things that you had to just be liked by Mike Shea and Jason Tate. And it worked. It would work really well. And if it didn't, you would kind of struggle through the forums or the premieres or whatever you would get out of them. And, you know, like and the Warp Tour was always like it's going to be crazy because like with this one being the last one, it's like the fact that, you know, Every meeting I've ever been in uh, was always like you used Warp Tour as like a launch point or like a second phase or whatever it is. Like you used yeah, it well, in your marketing plans, literally, you know. So 
it's crazy that like those things, I mean, that's how it was for bamboozle and stuff too. We were like announcing band signings at bamboozle at one point. Cause it was so I, like I sought totally after. Forgot. Yeah. yeah totally. It was like, we would literally pass out like postcards and samplers with the first time we ever mentioned that we signed this band or their yeah. new record got announced that day or whatever it was. It was like these really interesting flagpoles that like now kind of, again, it's really noisy. So it's like, I don't know where, like, what would that even be for people like now and it, for that scene, there really isn't that thing no i mean yeah there's not and like that's what that's what makes it so hard where like now i think bands um that are coming up right right now it's 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 harder to like find your place yeah because it's like where do you go to to find that and you know, it's going to be really interesting and i you know i'd be interested to hear your perspective on like once the the, 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 the like warp tour ends you know i mean I think there's a lot that's going to change. I mean, like there's yeah. there's a lot of bands that base their touring ar- around that that one s- specific tour. Right. Yeah, and I don't know if someone's going to try to create anything or even smaller than it in its place or something, which would obviously be helpful, but uh, very hard to do. Clearly, um, totally. Yeah. You I know, think that so would be the biggest problem with it is like that thing's so run so tight and it yeah. has for <laughs> twenty whatever years. Like, yeah, it's like. I don't think you could just come in and nail it the first time. And it of course. <laughs> yeah, and it, exactly. And I think that, like, obviously showing that it didn't work, it didn't work. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, it, yeah. It, it faded, however, whatever reasonings. Um, but I don't know, man. It's it's. I don't know if that scene will ever – I don't want to say ever because – at the time it was just so vibrant and there were so many pockets of it. I mean, I guess drive through did it, you know, years before fuel by did it too, where they yeah. kind of had to create their own scene. Like they, mm-hmm. they, they did too, because it's, it branched off. It was kind of the more, you know, pop centric side of the pop punk at the time where it could be played on the radio and they had to create like their own thing from the ground up. Cause no other label or no other scene or label was participating. And then eventually they had their own stage at warped. But beyond that, it was like, like those bands, you got to like find a way to make them into headliners. That's it's that, you know, basic, I guess, you know, as you guys are feeling now, like it just, it feels like the thing where there's not going to be as many launching pads, like you're saying. And I don't, I don't think anything solves that. I think it's just, you know, with the social media, the way it is, it's just the more like actual accountable, like contact with fans, you know, and like, again showing the, the stuff that you you guys do and you know the sh- you show up and you actually care about shit that's step one and you know so it's like doing things to document that in a way where it's not cheese ball shit and not going you know to you know sick kids homes just to film it and then get out of there and hate it you know what i mean yeah. like doing doing things for the right reasons i think will always elevate the bands and put them put you under a microscope in a really positive way yeah um do you feel like now when you're when you're um signing bands compared to maybe in you know 2007 eight, nine, that there's a shift in you know like coming off of like like I, like I was saying you know like you know bands that that were were coming up the, the the time of us you know had all these big ambitions because it felt like it was possible to to, to sure. an MTV or to be on the radio where like now that doesn't necessarily feel as possible. Um, yeah. Do you, th- do you think that's kind of like changed mentalities of, of, of bands like right now? Yeah. I think it's a, it's interesting because a lot of the bands, so, so yes and no, I guess some bands, yes, absolutely. And some bands like, there's, you know, a, a bunch of different little scenes right now that are like very much back to the basements and like yeah, fuck, totally. fuck corporate America and all this other stuff. So it's like, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because it's like, though, those are cool. And that's where it all kind of started in the energy that every, all of us built careers off of came from. So I think that, you know, watching that grow again and then those bands, when they hit their ceiling within that little world, that's when they're more open to like, oh man, like, and and it only takes a band or two to like step out of that normal, you know, route and to start something new to where then it becomes this like, oh, okay, they did it. It's cool. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just a kind of tough thing to where I think that you just got to find the right bands and artists and you'll dude, I'll meet with some artists still that are just like, no, I want to be the biggest band in the world by any means necessary. Like let's, 
let's figure out a way to do it, you know? So it's like, that's still there, but it, they don't, it's not as obvious to them, like the paths. Cause like yeah, yeah. bands, bands like fall boy or panic or whatever, those bands are like just big bands to them. They don't remember the, like how fall. it happened. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's hard because not a lot of bands these days are, you know, I guess, I don't know. It, they're not documenting, but I guess those bands didn't either, but we saw it different ways, like behind the scene DVDs or whatever you saw and you just watched the growth. But I think that a lot of bands, today just aren't seeing the growth because a lot of bands aren't talking about it. You know what I mean? Or it's just not happening as often or as easily as you and I got to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it felt like, you know, like that, that, that was such an interesting time because there was, there was just so many bands that were coming to success, like pretty quickly and yeah, were able right. to like grow these audiences. And it felt like it was just getting like huge like again you know even right. in our era like like i you know i know me and you talked about it the other day where it's like you know uh like 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 never shout never you know right. it's like all these like the, the the rumors the numbers that you heard of like yeah. you know how much chris got for his 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 record deal and all this stuff it's just like it was just people were just wanting to be a part of this yeah. world you know and it's yeah, just it was like, like a gold rush it was really weird yeah and <laughs> But like, I mean, like, w what an exciting time to be a part of the music industry. Like, yeah, it was great. And what's funny is like everyone that I met at that time was telling me that I had just missed it. Like it was already yeah. <laughs> not as good as the previous 10 years. And which, I mean, obviously, if you look at numbers overall, sure. But at the time, like going from basements to selling tens to hundreds to thousands, you know, to millions of records at one point, yeah. um, it's like, it, it's just, it's a crazy thing to watch. And, you know, again, I could go back though, like all those bands that had a lot of success i can pinpoint it to like something that they did or from early early conversations that i had with them just to know that they were like this was it like this is their life and they're yeah, doing it totally. and it's not just like a band but they're also doing this and they're also doing that like yeah. it's just it's not I don't, I don't know maybe it is like that still I, I it's with some bands i see it and with some bands i don't i mean obviously i still sign bands so i sign the ones i think still do that and speak yeah. to me that way um and i just you know if an artist is willing to kind of like bend over or put it all on the line non-stop it's like that's the artist that you can bet on forever yeah i mean and i i think that's that's kind of the common like thread and you know having these conversations with with people is like like you are like you were willing to go into as much debt as possible right. to do something that you completely believed in you yeah. know and it worked and then there's bands you know and like 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 us i mean we we were willing to drop everything i mean i there there's nothing that i wouldn't have done and there's nothing i wouldn't do now to like continue to do what what we do because right. I I just love being a part of this I yeah. love being a being a part of music like yeah. like I think that's the spark though that can't go if you have that thing yeah. I, just, I don't know if it really ever burns out yeah, like I mean like some pe some people get 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 like jaded and burnt out on it you know it's and it it, it happens often you know yeah. But I'm saying, like, if it's truly there, yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. I don't know, because I, I mean, look at us. Yeah. I mean, we're st like, we still want to do things every day. Con like, if we're not doing stuff, we start to freak out. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I think if it truly, truly is there, then I don't know. I don't think it does, I, and that's why there's not some bands around still that came up yeah. with this, you know? Yeah, and, and maybe there's different levels of it. I mean, like, you guys are more of the most ambitious, and, like, I can tell that, like, you don't sit at home for months and months on end. You know what I mean? Like, and just yeah. do nothing. Like, you're doing this, or you're doing writing your record, or whatever you're doing in the meantime. But, I mean, dude, there's a lot of bands that go home, and they're like, oof, that was tough. And they, like, can't wait yeah. to not not think about their band for a couple months. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. there's just varying levels of, you know, not maybe how badly you want it, but maybe how you're also programmed and educated on what it is you're trying to achieve. You know, maybe no one's ever told them that it's achievable, you know? So it's like, mm -hmm. there's gotta be that positive, yeah, well, at which, least track well, record. Yeah. Which is like one of the most exciting like th things about doing the podcast is like hearing, you know, people like to, to be able to see that, like you are like now, you know, you're, you're, you're an A&R guy at, you know, one of the, the biggest record labels, you know, a, a, a major record label. And like, 
you you were you were just a fan of bands. You right. were on the street team. You were like, and you just kept <laughs> working at it. I mean, that's all that that's exactly all that, that's all that, that we are. That you know, and like I I feel like people put put everybody up on this pedestal and don't understand that like these are just people that are fans just like anybody else and just yeah. had a passion and just ran with it. Right. I mean, any successful person in music can pinpoint to the first bands that they fell in love with that made them want to do it or story or anything like that. Like it, it, so like with you guys, you grew up during the drive through era. So you were probably just like newfound glory. Oh my God. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah. have, to, yeah. we got to figure out a way to be that. I want to be on stage. That looks so fun. All they're doing is touring with their friends, messing around and, and yeah. you were just not by, by any means necessary. You're like, I'm going to do that. And here you are 12, 13, whatever it is years later, still, still ripping, you know? So I think it's just, you know, showing people that like finding that like energetic, like moment. And then also then having someone in front of you or being naive enough to not understand it, to just, you try really hard. But a lot of people stop because they're like, Oh, someone's already doing this and they're better than me at it. So fuck it. You know, yeah. like, but like, think if like Fuel Bar Rum didn't start because Drive Through was already signing the bands we wanted to sign. Like, yeah. it'd be it'd yeah. be crazy. But that's that's a real mentality because a lot of people don't have that positive influence. So even you guys doing this, telling your stories, telling other people's stories on there, I think can hopefully just like grab someone that's like stuck somewhere, you know, and been like, oh fuck it, just just keep going, or or figure yeah. out what what it is that that actually drives you, or something that you'll that'll make you happy. Like it's well, just I th- I think that's a huge thing thing is maybe people it's hard to get like you have to get the clouds out of your your mind where it's like right. maybe the thing that you think you want really isn't that and that's not the thing that excites you that's why mm-hmm. you're not gonna do it you know like right i think a lot of it is is searching and trying things and, and doing a whole lot and and then you stumble upon the thing that you actually do enjoy and do really want to do and then that's the thing you're going to keep going yeah because that's the thing that you know gets your rocks off you know like yeah like, and you know like when when you were you know you you were working at, at field field feel by and then and then that ended and then you i mean just like the fact of like the persistence and the love that that you've you've had for this like then to build up a a a, a management company you know so you're like beginning again from 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 nothing yeah and, and you build up this huge thing. I mean, like, was was there ever a time when you were like, maybe I'm just done with this? Like, no, or, not even, not no. even a thought. Yeah. Like immediately when I left Fuel by, like the the end of that day, I I got on the phone with like five or six producers and was managing them. Like immediately within 24 uh-huh. hours. So it was just like something that I was like, I love this. This is one of my favorite parts about making records and signing bands. I want to do the other side of it now because I understand now what labels expect and bands expect and all this other stuff. So it was a really easy transition. But no, it never was like, oh man, I gotta. I got to pack it up and go back and get a job that I probably don't like now. Like it was just not that at all. It was immediate into like, I want to work for myself. I don't want anyone to ever dictate my, my income or my career or anything. So I want to build a foundation. So, I mean, much what you guys are clearly doing as well. And like, like I now at that end, on that end of my life, like I literally do, you know, I built a company with all my friends. Like it's just all friends that I manage and it's, really easy and it means a lot because if they don't work they don't eat and their families suffer so it's on me you know what I mean so it's like it's it's a fun accountability to put on myself to put pressure and and it was a lot to grow it but I'm five and a half years deep on it I mean and just like you mentioned snakes and suits I have a new clothing company called good future club that I started from zero like six months ago and it's like to me my wife and I just wanted to, to make a positive impact and do something that was like fun and include the music industry because that's where obviously we're both raised through it um and and immediately it was just like let's start from zero who gives a shit and let's just have fun with it and put stuff out in the world that we think can hopefully spark some some good thoughts or some good vibes and that's kind of where that went so it was like starting from zero is not scary as long as you actually want to do something it's more or less like the people that have i mean it's like it could shape a whole new thing it's awesome like i don't know what any of it's going to become but i'm having fun with it like as 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 much as I love being in the, in the main, and I think that we're gonna do it for a long time, you know. Mm-hmm. And I I you know like my goal is that like we we outlast every band that we've ever <laughs> That's gone great. on tour with. But yeah. at the same time, like there's also something really exciting about like 
if for some yeah. reason like it just ended tomorrow to like do it all again you know yeah to, to, take to, everything just, like, you learned just good and prove bad that you can do it you know yeah like it, ex- exactly and that's just, and it what's funny is like that's the thing that drives it to where if you actually want to do it it's you control it but yeah. it's i mean it's the same i heard it the other day and i loved it it was like someone that's like something about working out or like new year's resolutions was like you make these unrealistic like settings to where be like i have to work out seven days in a row that's it simple and you don't do it so you immediately quit and never work out for another month you know what i mean so it's like these people that just like have to have to have to figure out their whole career when they're 18 years old and then they freak out when it doesn't work out it's like just go do anything. Go do anything and everything, yeah. and do stupid shit. Do fun yeah. shit. Like do anything and just yeah, I mean, ha- have fun the whole time. You know, like if you know, I I, I would imagine it, it kind of goes like this. The same for you is like you know you you have all these big am, am, ambitions and you have to aim really big and you end up you like every single time you don't quite hit where you thought. You know, mm-hmm. like it, it. You're always, you know, in in my mind you know our our band was going to be in arenas you know right um and like i still think that that could happen you know um, Agreed. but like but we're on a different path to like get there you know so you you just you you really have to love the process of of doing this not not just the the end goal of, exactly. of like of what you're doing or you just you're not going to ever be be happy because you know th- there's been times in our band where like it got kind of freaky, you know. It was like not as many people are coming to the shows, not you know. Yeah. And you just have to, like, that that to me was just like more exciting. Like, all right, well, we'll f- let's 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 figure this this out. Let's let's yeah. keep it going. Well, there's, like, yeah, there's nothing else the, I want to do. Like, I'm I'm not gonna quit. You know, like, it's right. if you fall off the bull, you can't be afraid to get back on. I yeah. think that's like you know, it's like. As much as it hurt, that hurt <laughs> your ego, yeah, it's like uh, no, I'm down to get back on that thing and just get over rocked some and more. over, <laughs> or, or go to a different bowl. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, dude, yeah, just yeah, like tr- totally try us so many different things, and it's like you just gotta you gotta find the one that like you're gonna do, whether there's success or not. That's the thing that you need to find. Because that's the thing that you're going to do when it gets really hard or you're broke or you're going into debt or whatever. And then if it is good and I mean, obviously, the quality has to be there on some level to where, you know, then you get to hopefully surround yourself with really good people and keep working towards the bigger goal, whatever that may be. And whatever that it's just it's it's got to be a drive, though, and it has to be exciting to you or else you'll find a way to not do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like you either really love it or you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's well, pretty I'm, simple. We watched a lot of bands, obviously, all the three of us come and go how many times, you know. Yeah. So you, you can, you, I'm sure we could we could make a list of bands that we all immediately thought weren't going to make it that broke up a year later, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's just, exactly. it's something you can kind of sometimes understand just by conversation or being around or seeing the lack thereof be put into any of it yeah well i'm 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 excited to uh for uh, for us to both continue to be doing this for another 15 years and have this conversation again and yeah. I, I, it's weird not seeing years, in Chicago yeah. anymore and I know in, in, in LA <laughs> it's, it's it's a different beast but now I get to bring my daughter out so it's kind of yeah. more fun yeah that's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. well th- yeah. Th- 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 thanks for taking the time to talk and i i uh i'm i'm just i'm so pumped for for people to continue to see what you know what e- exciting things that you 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 bring to the, the, the our, our music scene because there's there's not that many people you know left that have this much of a passion for for what they're what they're doing so. awesome well thank you and i could say the same about you guys and what you do and what you bring so um you know keep doing it and we'll keep listening i guess right <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah man well thanks so much cool awesome, we'll be good dude. dudes Thank thanks for you. chatting all righty